Good day, students of Sleepy and Jones International School. I welcome you all to another session of our online classes. And once again, my name is Mr. Victor Aniki. The topic I have for you today is algebraic simplification. And my aim is to make you know how to use factorization to simplify algebraic fractions by reducing them to their lowest term and two, to make you know how to multiply and divide algebraic fractions and also reduce them to their lowest terms and then make you know how to add and subtract algebraic fractions to give a single algebraic fraction. So those are the three lesson objectives we're going to be looking at today. And like we just said, the first one is to know how to reduce or simplify algebraic fractions to their lowest term. And I made a note here, which I'd also like to see in your notes when we come back. And um, the first thing to always do when you have uh, an algebraic fraction to simplify is to know that when simplifying algebraic fractions, always factorize the numerators and the denominators fully to obtain common expressions that can be cancelled out. It is always necessary to factorize the numerator and the denominator so that you can figure out if there are common terms that can cancel out. For the first example I have here, the question says simplify d squared minus 9 all over d squared minus 7d plus 12. This is the algebraic fraction. It is called an algebraic fraction because it has alphabets instead of numbers. So the question says I should simplify d squared minus 9 all over d squared minus 7d plus 12. I have to look closely at the numerator and observe that the numerator is um, the difference of two perfect squares d squared and 9. If you notice, 9 is a perfect square. And then the denominator is an algebraic expression. And it says d squared minus 7d plus 12. Now, how do I factorize an expression that is the difference of two squares? I should know that when I have the numerator I have d squared minus 9, then I'm going to change the 9 to 3 squared. And from our knowledge of difference of 2 squares, when we have d squared minus 3 squared, it becomes d minus 3 and d plus 3. I have been able to factorize the numerator. Then I'll do the same to the denominator. But the denominator is not the same as the numerator, so I use other process of factorizing the denominator. And I'm going to write for the denominator d squared minus 70 plus 12. And any SS2 student can relate with the factorization process. You look for two numbers such that their products will give a plus 12 and their sum will give a minus 7. So if you do your trial, you have your 1 and 12, your 2 and 6, and then the 4 and 3. If you notice, it is 4 and 3 that can be manipulated to get 7. And how do I allocate signs to 4 and 3 so that I get a minus 7? And obviously, it will be minus 4 and minus 3. Because minus 4 minus 3 will give a minus 7. And minus 4 times minus 3 will give a plus 2. So minus 4 and minus 3 can be used to split minus 70. And so I factorize in this section of the, of the board. And I have d squared minus 3d 
minus 40 plus 12. I have used the minus 4 and minus 3 to split the minus 7D. And it doesn't matter which one comes first. Some teachers can decide to write the minus 4D first before the minus 3. Anyone is going to give the same answer. Then I ask myself which term is common in d squared and minus 3. The term that is common to both of them is d. And if I open this bracket, I'll be left with d minus 3. I have factorized the first two expressions. I'll do the same for the other two expressions. And the common term for minus 4d and plus 12 is minus 4. I know 2 is also common, but the highest common factor there is minus 4. And if I open the bracket, I'll have a d and minus 3. Remember, the, the term here, the expression here, should be the same as the expression in the second bracket. So I'm going to use d minus 3 and d minus 4 in another bracket. If you notice, I have factorized the numerator and I got d minus 3 and d plus 3. And I've just done the same for the denominator and I got d minus 3 and d minus 3. We have been able to factorize the numerator and the denominator. And for the numerator, we have a d minus 3 and a d plus 3. And for the denominator, we have a d minus 3 and a d minus 4. And we had said that when simplifying algebraic fractions, always factorize the numerators and the denominators fully to obtain common expressions that can be cancelled out. Because we were able to factorize this fully, we can see that d minus 3 can cancel d minus 3, and we will be left with d plus 3 over d minus 4. This is the simplified and final answer to the question d squared minus 9 over d squared minus 7d plus 12. We have a second example for you um, to strengthen our knowledge of simplification of algebraic fractions. And the question says, 8 minus 2a minus a squared all over 2a squared minus 3a minus 2. These are two algebraic expressions. And we have to factorize them like we've just learned how to factorize or knowing that you know how to factorize algebraic expression in the past. But because I'm teaching this, I also believe that some students are learning to factorize for the first time. So I still and I have to still write down some steps for them to follow when factorizing algebraic expressions. So for the numerator, or the numerator, I have 8 minus 2a minus a squared. Now, if you notice, for this particular algebraic expression, the a squared is having a minus sign. And in order for me to be able to factorize this properly, I'm going to use the coefficient of a squared to multiply it and find the factors of the products that I will obtain. I'll say that again. I'll use the, a, the coefficient of the a squared to multiply it. And the coefficient of a squared here is minus 1. And if minus 1 multiplies it, I'll get a minus 8. So I will find factors of minus 8 such that their product will be a minus 8 and their sum will give a minus 2. And of course, you know that factors of 8 ordinarily uh, is 1 and 8, 2 and 4. And out of these factors, or these pair of factors, um, 2 and 4 can be manipulated to get minus 2. And if I follow my sign allocation, 
to get a minus 2, I will have a plus 2 and a minus 4. You can agree with me that plus 2 minus 4 is minus 2, which conforms to what we have here, and then plus 2 minus 4 is minus 8, which also conforms to the products that we have. So plus 2 and minus 4 can be used to split the middle expression. So I will write 8 plus 2a minus 4a minus a squared. And I will factorize an expression out of the first two. And what is common to both of them is 2. And if we factorize the 2 out of 8 plus 2a, we are left with a 4 plus a. And if you also factorize an expression out of minus 4a minus a squared, you will have um, a minus a, and you will be left with 4 plus a. I say that the expressions inside both brackets are supposed to be the same. So this can finally be factorized as my 2 minus a in one bracket and 4 plus a in the second bracket. So we have been able to factorize the denominator and we're going to do the same to the... We have been able to factorize the numerator and we're going to do the same to the denominator. We have been able to factorize the numerator and we have a 2 minus a and 4 plus a in different brackets. And we are going to do the same to the denominator so that we can figure out like terms and cancel out where possible. So for the denominator, for the we have a 2a squared minus 3a minus 2. And to factorize this, I have to use the coefficient of a here, a squared here, to multiply the constant term. And if I do that, I'll get a minus 4. Always know that in a quadratic expression, if the coefficient of the a squared term or the x squared term is not a plus 1, you have to use that coefficient to multiply the constant term. And since we've done that, we have a minus 4, and we have to find factors of 4 that their products will give a minus 4 and their sum will give a minus 3. And you know that the factors of 4 are 1 and 4 and 2 and 2. Out of these pair of factors, um, we know that if we allocate sign to 1 and 4, because it is 1 and 4 that can be manipulated to get a minus 3. And if we allocate sign, it will be plus 1 and minus 4 that will conform to what we want in the question. Because plus 1 times minus 4 is a minus 4, and plus 1 minus 4 is a minus 3. So if I use the plus 1 and minus 4 to split the center term, I will have a 2a squared plus 1 plus a minus 4a minus 2. Of course, it's 1a, but we don't usually write 1a because a represents 1a. And if I get the term that is common to 2a squared plus a, it will be 2a. And what I will have left in the bracket is a 2a plus 1. And if I also factorize the term that is common to minus 4a and minus 2, I'll have a minus 2, and I'll be left with a 2a plus 1. Always know that the term here and the term here are supposed to be the same. For you to know that you're getting the factorization right. So if I bring the common terms together, I'll have a minus a minus 2 in one bracket and 2a plus 1 in the second bracket. Now that I've factorized both the numerator and the denominator, the expression can now be written as 2 minus a and 4 plus a, that was what we got as the numerator, 
and then a minus 2 and 2a plus 1 as the denominator. Now, if you look closely, if you look closely at the answers that we have gotten, it is likely that most students will not see the common term in this expression or in the numerator and the denominator because the answers are looking as though there are no common terms because here is 2, two minus a and the denominator is a minus 2. These two cannot just cancel out like that. But if you observe, if we factorize a minus 1 out of the numerator, if we factorize a minus 1 out of 2 minus a, or you can agree with me that 2 minus a is the same thing as minus a plus 2, if we switch their sides. If we have 2 minus a changed to minus a plus 2, then this expression will be written as minus a plus 2, 4 plus a in the numerator, and a minus 2 and 2a plus 1 as the denominator. Our aim is to try and fish out the common term that exists in the numerator and the denominator. And if you look closely, we saw that 2 minus a and a minus 2 were looking close, and they were looking as though there is a relationship between them. And we found out that that relationship can be obtained when we factorize a minus 1 out of the numerator. And then when we factorize the minus 1, we will have an a minus 2 and then 4 plus a still in the numerator. And then the denominator will remain as a minus 2 and 2a plus 1 in the second in the denominator. Now you can see that a minus 2 can cancel out a minus 2. And our answer is minus 1, 4 plus a over 2a plus 1. The answer can be left like this, or you can use the minus 1 to expand further. And it can be written as minus 4 minus a all over 2a plus 1. This is the simplified answer to the, our question, which says 8 minus 2a minus a squared all over 2a squared minus 3a minus 2. In order to get that simplified answer, we were able to factorize the numerator finding factors of minus 8 having multiplied the coefficient of a squared by 8 and we got a 2 and minus 4. We use the 2 and minus 4 to split the center expression and when we did we were able to factorize the expression to 2 minus a and 4 plus a. For the denominator we did the same thing, we used 2 to multiply a minus 2 and we got a minus 4. We also found factors of minus 4 that can be used to obtain a minus 3 when summed up. We got a plus 1 and a minus 4. We used those to split the middle term. And we were able to factorize the expression as a minus 2 and 2a plus 1 in the second bracket. We then wrote down the factorized expressions of both the numerator and the denominator. And we're able to get 2 minus a and 4 plus a, a minus 2 and 2a plus 1. Then we saw that there's something common to 2 minus a and a minus 2 when we factorize the minus 1 out of the expression. Well, first we reversed their positions and then we factorized the minus 1. When we did factorize the minus 1, it became a minus 2, which was common to the a minus 2 in the denominator and then we cancel both of them. We were left with the minus 1 and 4 plus a in the numerator, and we were left with the 2 a plus 1 in the denominator, and then we wrote it down. I said earlier that the answer can be left like that, or we use the minus 1 to expand the numerator, and we got a minus 4 minus a all over 2a plus 1. So I believe you have been able to know how to simplify algebraic fractions after those examples. 
our next lesson objective is to make you know how to multiply and divide simple algebraic fractions. Okay. For the multiplication and division of um, algebraic fractions, we still need to use the factorization process. We still have to know that we have to factorize fully in order to see common terms and cancel out. For the first example we have here, it says uv all over 3u minus 6v times 4u minus 8v all over u square v. I want you to know that it is not possible for us to cancel u and u in any of these until we have found out um, common terms. And that can only be found if we know how to factorize. Not all the questions are algebraic expressions. Some require simple factorization. Like for this particular one, the denominator of the first expression can be factorized by bringing out a 3 out of the expression, knowing that 3 is common to 3u and 6v. Similarly, for the numerator, 4 is common to both 4u and minus 8v. And when 4 is factorized out of the expression, you will be left with a u minus 2v. And then for the denominator, I can decide to write this as u, uv in another expression, knowing that a uv exists somewhere in the question. So having factorized as far as this, the uv here can cancel the uv in this expression, and the u minus 2v here can cancel the u minus 2v here in this other expression. And having done this, I can see that I'm left with 1 times v and 3 times u. So for the numerator, 1 times 4 will give us 4, and then 3 times u will give us a 3u. For the numerator, I was left with 1 and 4, and for the denominator, I was left with 3 and u. So when 1 multiplied 4, we had a 4, and when 3 multiplied u, we had a 3u. It means that this question has been simplified to 4 all over 3 u. That is the answer to the first question. For our second example for today, we have algebraic expressions here and there to simplify. We have e squared minus 5e plus 6, all over e squared plus 2e minus 3 divided by 3e minus 9 over 2e squared plus 6e. So I'm going to be factorizing each of them concurrently and I may not show the step because I know that SS2 students should be conversant with factorization of quadratic expressions. So for the numerator, factors of 6 that will produce a minus 5 are minus 3 and minus 2. So I quickly split the middle term with 3e minus 2e plus 6 all over Similarly, factors of minus 3 that will produce the plus 2 are plus 3 and minus 1. So I'll split the denominator as well, plus 3e minus e, supposedly minus 1e minus 3. Then on this other side, there's a simple factorization to be done. We factorize a 3 out of e, 3e minus 9 and you will get a 3 open bracket e minus 3 divided all over 2e is common in this case and left with an e plus 3. Now for this numerator e, my e is common e minus 3 in one bracket minus 2 is also common to this expression and I'm having an e minus 3 in another bracket, all over. e is also common in this first expression. I'm having an e plus 3, 
And then minus 1 is common in this other expression, and I'm having an e plus 3 divided by, I will write this section e minus 3 all over te e plus 3. Now you can agree with me that these terms are common, so I take one of them and take what I have outside the brackets all over, take one of them here as well, and then I take what I have outside the brackets divided by 3 e minus 3 all over 2 e e plus 3. At this point, we have to know that when we have our division sign, it changes to multiplication and this section of the fraction is reversed. So I have my e minus 3, e minus 2, all over e plus 3, and e minus 1, times, and then I have to write the 2e, e plus 3 first, all over 3, e minus 3. I have just reversed this fraction. And when that is done, then we can now start looking out for like terms and cancel out as far as possible. Note that numerator cannot be used to cancel another numerator. It has to be the numerator and any of the denominators. So the first one I can spot here is e minus 3 cancelling out e minus 3. You can also see that e plus 3 here can cancel out e plus 3 on this other section. So I am left with and e minus 2 over e minus 1 times 2e over 3. There are no like terms anywhere again, so the answer becomes 2e in e minus 2 all over 3 times e minus 1. The answer to this question has been found and the simplified version of the question is 2e open brackets e minus 2 all over 3 open bracket e minus 1. I have been able to simplify that particular example for you and we have just learned how to multiply and divide algebraic fractions as well as bringing it down to its lowest term. We have been able to learn simplification of algebraic fractions and we also learned how to multiply and add algebraic fractions and also simplify them as far as possible. In our third and final lesson objective, we will be looking at addition and subtraction of algebraic fractions. And I have a very simple example here for us and it says we should add 3 over 2ab to 4 over 3bc. So it's a very simple one because we know how to add fractions before now. So the same process is used. You look for the LCM of the denominator and divide and multiply accordingly. So the LCM of 2AB and 3BC is 6ABC. You can look that up from your LCM format which is 2AB and 3BC. I use a 2 to break this down and I get an AB. Then I will see that there's nothing common. I have to bring down the 3BC. I also use a 3 to break this down and I get an AB and a BC. I use an A, I get a B, and I get a BC here. I use a B, I get a 1 and a C. I use a C and I get a 1 and a 1. So the LCM has been confirmed to be 6abc because 2 times 3 is 6. Now 6abc will multiply, will divide 2ab rather. And when 6abc divides 2ab, I'll be left with a 3c. By way of confirmation, if 
I divide this by 2AB, A will cancel A, B will cancel B, 2 into 6 is 3. 3 times C is 3C. And 3C times 3 will give 9C. Same thing, 6ABC divided by 3BC, and I'll be left with a 2A. And 2A times 4 will give me 8A. Now, if you notice, 9C cannot add 8A. Nothing can be done about this because there are no like terms that can be used to cancel out the denominator, and nothing can be factorized out of the numerator. So the answer is best left as 9C plus 8A all over 6A, B, and C. This is the answer to the question 3 over 2AB plus 4 over 3BC. Now, the second example is the one I have here on the board. And this is question number 23 of the just concluded 2020 YEC objective question. So the question was, a, they should simplify A over B minus B over A minus C over B. And the options are these, I wrote here. So we're going to use what we've just learned to simplify this. And then we look for the option that we should choose or which is the correct option amongst what has been written. So simply or quickly we're going to find the LCM of B, A and B. You can agree with me that the LCM of B, A and B is AB. You can confirm that from your LCM table. B is common and I have 1, A and 1. A is also common and I have 1, 1, 1. And when you multiply B and A, you get an AB. So an AB a, divided by B, I'll be left with A. A times A is A squared minus AB divided by A is B. B times B is B squared. And AB divided by B is A. And A times C is AC. Now, there is still nothing common to factorize out in the numerator. So the answer is best left as A squared minus B squared minus AC all over AB. And if you look at the option, it is option D that should be chosen as the correct answer. And if you do this, I'm sure you're going to get an A1 in mathematics if you learn all these processes. So I want you to know that we have come to the end of today's class. We learned how to simplify algebraic fractions. We learned to multiply and divide algebraic fractions, and we just learned to add and divide algebraic fractions. You can also agree with me that this, the process is very, very similar to ordinary fractions. Just know that you have to factorize fully in order to figure out common terms and cancel out where necessary. So I believe you have been able to understand what to do when you see a question that comes out of algebraic fractions. So today I have a very simple assignment for you. I got this from your textbook, so you can also check your textbook and see if you, there are other questions you would like to attempt and submit. But for now, I want you to simplify c squared minus cd all over d squared minus cd. And the question number two says 15 minus 2x minus x squared all over x squared minus 25. Question number 3 says u squared plus 3u minus 10 all over 3u squared plus 12 divided by 3e minus 9 all over 2u squared plus 60. And the final question says 4 over x minus 3 minus 1 over x plus 2. All these questions require that you solve, simplify as far as possible. When you're done, please screenshot your answers and send to my WhatsApp number, which is 070-39-371313. I hope you've enjoyed yourself today, and I wish to see you in another session of our algebraic class. Thank you very much.